Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this postmortem of my Blitz game number 710. I have the white pieces and start off with knight f3. I just wanted to point out uh, e4 and d4 are the top two choices by far for opening moves. And uh, knight f3 is somewhat surprisingly in third place, followed by uh, c4, the uh, English opening. Um, it might be a bit surprising to see that uh, knight f3 is so popular. Um, it's not that the red t opening, which is what I'm going for, is so popular. It's just that knight f3 is often used as a, uh, a tool to get into a particular uh, d4 opening, a line of the queen's gambit declined where you've already got the knight out on f3 and it rules out certain other lines in the queen's gambit. So um, that, that's why knight f3 by itself is such a popular move here, even though the, the red t opening is, is not so popular. So we'll see this idea show up after uh, white play, uh, black plays d5, one of the main responses. I usually go with knight f6. It's just kind of a waiting move, <laughs> letting letting white declare his intentions before deciding how to uh, deploy the rest of my forces. But um, because knight f3 is not uh, particularly forcing, I mean, basically the only move it eliminated was uh, e5. Uh, that gives white a lot of choice, so white can go with uh, d5 or c5 or even with a, a fianchetto immediately. Um, but d5, very reasonable response. And now if I went d4 here, we'd would be doing, and you see that's the top choice, we would be going into a line of the, the queen's gambit probably. So, but I'm not, I'm going for the red T, so that's G3. My opponent goes uh, knight F6, that's a main move here. I go bishop G2, and he goes uh, E6. E6 and C6 are the top choices, just adding a little more support to that D pawn. And I go with C4, that's uh, <clears throat> one of the key ideas of the red T. You're trying to uh, you put this bishop out here right away, and you're trying to make it into a strong piece by uh, attacking along this diagonal. So um, c4 is very logical. And if uh, black takes, then you have this trick where you check and pick up the pawn with the queen. Um, let's see, a normal move here might be bishop e7. This is kind of a short game, so maybe, yeah, maybe I'll explore the opening a little bit. I'm... Uh, the red tee is not one I've played in over the board chess, but I'm thinking I'm just about ready to start trying it. So maybe one of my over the board games will feature a red tee uh, pretty soon. I'm, I'm starting to learn some of the ins and outs of it. Um, so let's look at the main line here. Bishop e7, and then avoiding d4 once again, but just castling and staying in this setup, say black castles. And then uh, uh, one once again, avoiding d4 and just going with b3. So we get this similar uh, kind of setup to what we saw in the game. And uh, let's see, after c5, what do I respond here? Just bishop b2, keep developing. Hmm. That's that's a little uh, uh, curious. Uh, bishop b2 would allow d4. I'm not quite sure what to make of that. Maybe d4 comes under fire later with e3 or something. Um, anyway, I just wanted to show a little bit of how the main line goes. In this um, game, he played c6. And once again, I could play um, d4 transposing back into a queen's gambit declined, or uh, b3 like I played. Um, this move uh, that I might try sometime, queen c2, looks pretty interesting. I, I seem to be uh, missing this idea. Yeah, let's see. So just queen c2 and knight bd7. And what's the follow-up here? Castling. Um, so we get uh, an opportunity later to play queen c2, so let's go back to the game. So I played b3 here, just... Uh, Defending this pawn and um, bringing the bishop out here um, to b2 is the, the idea here. He goes bishop e7, defending his knight. I go bishop b2 now. I could castle, um, but apparently these moves can be played in either order because I don't, didn't see any problems looking at it with the chess engine. And um, after I castle, we get back to the same position. Um, so he goes knight bd7 here, and, um, and now finally I go d4. So the way to still stay in red T lines, and I looked at this later, is either with d3 or queen c2. And I did think about this d3 move, um, but the move I didn't think about is queen c2. It's, it's something I need to put on my radar as a possible move in the red T opening. But, um, so let's uh, check out d3 a little bit here. d3, he might go b5 now, like he played in the game. And then uh, just developing knight bd2. It looks like um, there's no big problem. What I was a little bit worried about, and I talked about this during the game, is if I didn't play um, <clears throat> d4 here, he might have the opportunity to play e5 later. So I tried to find a sequence, 
Say I go uh, d3 and he goes queen c7. The engine does not think this is a good way for black to play, by the way. I'm just uh, wondering if there's a way for black to get in that e5 move. He can't play it immediately because, uh, you know, I had these pieces covering the e5 square. But say queen c7 trying to support e5. Say I just develop a knight bd2. Now he can play e5. Um, but the engine thinks this is very good for white. Wants to trade here. Bring the rook out to harass the queen. And then play e4. And go for this uh, locked up position. And uh, knight comes forward to c4. I guess this is kind of a closed position. But, um, and uh, it seems like, you know, this bishop has been improved in that there's an open line for the bishop. But the bishop can't move uh, immediately because uh, because uh, this knight and the queen are occupied defending the pawn. I've got two pieces attacking the pawn, so he has to keep that defended. And so I guess um, my peace pressure here is enough to uh, uh, give give an advantage to white in this kind of case. Anyway, that's uh, that's uh, if I wanted to stay in reti lines, I just wanted to investigate that a little bit. Um, so in this position, I played d4. Let's see. Yeah, we're still in the opening book. He went b5 now. I guess b6 is a little more common of an idea in this case. b6 and bishop to b7 and later pushing on with um, c5. b6 and c5 uh, would be a typical setup for black here. Um, so he went with b6. And now I just decided to uh, lock things up. I could just develop a knight bd2, but we're in a... A very uh, <laughs> a small portion of the opening book, and uh, so all these moves. C5 is just fine. Actually, it was a it was a top engine recommendation. Basically, the idea is to uh, lock down his pawns on these light squares, and this this bishop is never getting into the game. So that, that's some kind of long term advantage for uh, White. Let's see. He plays A5 here. He needs to try and break out somehow. So he's going to try and do it with his queenside pawns. I just keep developing my pieces. So he goes rook e8. Maybe he has an idea of pushing that e-pawn at some time as well. Um, but I'm going to try and stop that. Let's see, I go rook e1. And he goes a4. And here, you know, what I'm thinking of with this, these two moves, knight to d2 and rook to e1, is I want to kind of open up the center while his pieces are still in a tangle. And that seems to be uh, okay here. The chess engine, I should point out, thinks that uh, b4 is the strongest move in this position and uh, gives white a significant edge. Um, you know, I guess I could, I still have this uh, e4 break to play at a later time, but I went ahead and played it now. Um, still leaving an advantage to white, but um, but it's a little bit, uh, it's not as strong as an, an advantage as if I had played b4 right away. Um, let's see, the chess engine doesn't, doesn't particularly care for this a3 move. Uh, it wants to start the exchanges. But he played um, a3 first, kicked my bishop once, and then he then he took, and I took back, and now he went uh, queen c7. So maybe now he's got he's thinking about this uh, e pawn push, although it's not really happening in this particular case. Um, <clears throat> maybe he was trying to defend his c pawn, which was undefended. That that's possibly an idea here. Um, anyway, I play this part well. I take the knight off with check and then when he takes back with the knight which is the most natural way um, I get this great perch for my knight um, he could have considered taking back with the bishop I might have gone there with the knight anyway because uh, um, that would that would provoke some trades um, anyway yeah the chess engine thinks that those moves are about equal but I, I like this for white with that uh, good good purchase for my knight there but he gets I guess a good spot for his knight. He gets gets into knight d5. And now um, the chess engine wants to save the bishop, drop the bishop back here, keep keep the bishop pair. Um, I wasn't entirely sure. I, I played queen d2. I thought I didn't mind giving up that bishop so much for the knight. Um, it's not the best bishop, and, uh, and I keep my pieces active. Um, the engine still gives an advantage to white in this position, so I'm still playing okay. In fact, uh, both of us have done all right until this very move when uh, black plays queen b8, and this is just a blunder, and actually it's the only real blunder of the game. Uh, so both of us played reasonably well. I didn't take advantage of it. <laughs> I should have taken that pawn right away, but I was still focused on uh, 
locking these pawns up, you know, he has this threat after the queen moves of pushing his c pawn forward. But um, a b pawn, pushing his b pawn forward and kicking my bishop, actually traps my bishop. So there, there is a threat there, but uh, taking on c6 meets the threat because by bringing an extra piece to defend as well as hitting the queen. So, uh, so I could have taken right away. Anyway, I played b4 to block his pawn push. He played f6 to kick my knight away. And now I grab on c6. And uh, he resigned at this point. And um, yeah, it, it may have been a bit of an early resignation. But, um, you know, in addition to getting the pawn, I'm also uh, winning that good bishop, leaving him with this sad bishop here. Although, uh, you know, he'll probably push on with e5 and liberate that bishop. But the uh, chess engine gives white a plus two advantage here. So pretty, pretty strong edge for white here. So uh, uh, I guess it was okay for him to resign. Uh, anyway, interesting game. Hope you guys like this. Leave any comments you have in the section below, and I'll see you again soon.